The Eakins ransomware has been used to target high-profile companies in 2020. So Jaime, uh, you have a story on this ECANS ransomware that affects industrial control systems? Yeah, so, you know, this ECANS ransomware has been making the rounds lately and it has affected a, a bunch of high profile targets. Uh, you know, there is like this big uh, car manufacturer from, from uh, Japan, as well as some energy companies in South America. And, you know, data from, from Palo Alto and other points that they are targeting in a specific, you know, industrial companies. So, you know, the ransomware itself is not very complex, but the fact that it is aware of some of these ICS, uh, you know, industrial protocols make it uh, a, a very interesting piece of hardware to look at, basically, because you want to keep an eye on these threat actors, because you never know where, you know, uh, what they're going to do once they gain access to these type of companies. I mean, they, they go, uh, go from, uh, from ransomware to something, you know, more uh, nefarious. So yeah, this Ekans ransomware, uh, it, it was discovered at the end of 2019 and Dragos actually did a, a nice analysis back then around, around January uh, and they call it Snake, but it's important to know this is not the same uh, piece of malware as Snake that is used by Turla. Uh, you know, it's it's a separated Snake. So then Dragos decided to just keep using Ekans because it's you know, backwards. If, if you use, if, if you read Z Snake, Backwards, it's, it's Ekans, right? So that's, that's how the name came out. Um, so so as, as I mentioned, I mean, the ransomware is really simple. It will, the first thing it does is list the processes that are running, and then it will kill a, a hard-coded list of processes. Anything new, it will kill antivirus software, it will, it will kill backup uh, software. So like, you know, the system is unable to backup before the ransomware is, is, is done. And then, uh, you know, it will also look for a specific uh, pieces of software that are used in industrial environments. So this is the, the, the important, you know, interesting part uh, about this ransomware. So once this, it does this, it, it will do things like removing the volume shadow copy from Windows so that you cannot go back to that, uh, uh, you know, backup. And then another interesting part is, if you remember, most ransomware will encrypt um, files and they, they they rename those files with a particular extension but in the case of ecans what it does is just generate a random extension that is five character, characters long in each of the files so it's it's harder to use that heuristic where you can you can look at you know ten thousand uh, file renames uh, in a short period of time so it, it's pretty clever also i didn't mention that the ransomware is is written in go uh, and this is you know, lately it's kind of trending, like you see more threat actors uh, writing malware in Go. And the advantage of doing that is like, you know, Go, it's 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 an interesting language because, you know, you can compile that. And then uh, antivirus traditionally have, have had a, a, a harder time, you know, like analyzing these uh, these executables that are, are are produced from the Go compiler. So it, it, it adds a lot of, uh, a, little, a, a little bit of complexity when it comes to like uh, analyzing those files. We, we haven't seen any propagation features that are in uh, the, the ransomware itself, right? If you remember, WannaCry and others uh, will have some modules that allow them to, once they access uh, a network, try to move laterally in that network. We haven't seen that in, in this uh, piece of, of ransomware. We believe it's manually um, deployed. Uh, and actually, we have found a couple of files that are actually, you know, this malware. And we have seen that those are likely the files that were used in these victims in Japan and South America. Because, you know, when you execute those those samples in a, in a sandbox, you see that they try to contact an internal uh, domain from those companies. And we believe this is something, and, you know, others also believe this is something that the malware sample is doing to make sure that it's in that particular environment. Otherwise, it, it wouldn't execute. In terms of uh, attack vectors, how the, the threat actor is deploying this in, in the network, we haven't been able to, com to confirm anything, but there are rumors that they're actually exploiting exposed RDP remote desktop uh, uh, servers out there. And another company was able to confirm that bug, bug victims actually had 
some RDP exposed servers on the internet. So that could be it where, you know, the threat actors are finding compromised credentials and are testing those credentials in this exposed RDP server. Um, and, you know, what can you do to avoid this? Uh, I mean, the obvious is patch your systems, don't expose uh, RDP on, uh, to the internet, uh, don't reuse passwords, um, you know, enable to factor authentication, have a very, uh, very good backup strategy uh, that actually can prevent things like ransomware that is aware of backup solutions. We have seen ransomware uh, malware that actually is able to connect to the NAS and delete the backup. So you need to be careful when uh, you implement that, that strategy. And then, you know, especially prioritize patching everything that is on the internet, right? We have seen runs, you know, threat actors that deploy ransomware exploiting vulnerabilities in Citrix, in Palo Alto, in Foreignet, and actually yesterday Palo Alto just announced a new vulnerability uh, in, in, in Palo Alto that can be used to, uh, you know, gain access without, you know, pre-authentication uh, and bypass the authentication. So it's very critical that companies patch that. I mean, that will be the, the first thing you can do to avoid this type of incidents. Yeah, I mean, great background. I mean, I, I was curious, and I forget if it said it necessarily in the article when you, you mentioned it, is, is how this is getting installed. Um, you know, whenever I see stories about these industrial control systems, I'm always curious, you know, are, uh, are their IT systems getting compromised and then, and, you know, they're laterally moving to their OT systems. Um, but, you know, as you've seen, you know, there's, there's a lot of resources, you know, ICS systems that are just directly on the internet, right? Uh, unpatched, um, which, which are going to give, give them, the, you know, their, their kind of jump point in. Um, I, I, and I was reading some of the other mitigations. I think they said it was, um, it was unsigned. Um, right. So in some of these, some of these systems will, uh, will prohibit execution of unsigned binaries. Again, that just assumes that that's enabled, right? So it's like there's, there's a recommended mitigations beyond, you know, kind of some of the best practices that, that maybe help with this. Um, yeah, in interesting. I mean, it, certainly ransomware is never good. Uh, and when you combine that with you know, potentially, uh, you know, control systems and, and plants, it uh, kind of goes to the next level. So yeah, in interesting story. Thank you. Thank you.